It's just a jump to the left. Here we go, chapter 2, lesson number 12, logarithmic differentiation. What is logarithmic differentiation? Well, it is used to find the derivative of a function, and we normally use it if x is part of an index in our function, or if we have a product or quotient of powers or roots. How do we use it? Well, what we do first of all is we take the natural logs of our function before we differentiate. And then if we can, then to make it simpler, we would apply our log rules. Remember from higher, our log rules are if we have ln a times b, we can split that up so it's ln a plus ln b. If we have ln a divided by b, we can split that up as well, so it's ln a take away ln b. And finally, ln a to the power of n, we can move the n down, Whee! so that becomes n ln a. Those are our log rules. Let's try some examples then. Example 1, given y equals 10 to the power of x, use logarithmic differentiation to find dy by dx. To hear, how would you know to use logarithmic differentiation if it didn't tell you? Because x is an index. Perfect, because x is an index. If x is the index, you would take the natural logs of both sides and you would do that to move the index down. So if we take the natural logs of both sides, we'd have ln y equals ln 10 to the power of x. And using this log rule down here, we can then say that this would equal well, ln y will stay as ln y, but we can bring the x down so that will become x ln 10. Now what we need to do is differentiate this. How would we go about differentiating this? What would we do? Well, if we differentiate ln y, that just goes to ln something is 1 over something, so that goes to 1 over y. However, we are differentiating y with respect to x, so we'd have dy by dx. If we differentiate x ln 10, what do you do? Good, you just get rid of the x. Treat this just as 2x or 3x or 14.7x. Remember, ln10 is just a number. ln10 is a number, so you treat it the way you would, just with 5x. The x disappears and it leaves you with the number. If you put ln10 into your calculator, you just get a number out. Make sure you're not using the product rule here because you do not have two functions in terms of x being multiplied together. L intends as a number, and x is obviously a function, so x would disappear. From there, we've got 1 over y dy by dx equals ln 10. We want to find what dy by dx equals, so we need to get rid of this, divide by y, so multiply both sides by y. Therefore, dy by dx would equal y times ln 10. From there, really, we want to leave our answer in terms of x. We are not wanting to have it in terms of x and y, so we want to get rid of this y. How do we get rid of it? Well, we replace it. We replace y with what it is equal to. And you can see in the question, y is equal to 10 to the power of x. So we rewrite that y as 10 to the power of x times the ln 10. That way, dy by dx is in terms of x. And that is your first answer. Woo! Example 2, given y equals 2 to the power of 3x, use logarithmic differentiation once again to find dy by dx. Victor, how do you know you'd use logarithmic differentiation? Perfect, because x is part of the index, and we'd really need x down, not as part of an index. So you would take the natural logs of both sides. Doing that, you would have ln y equals ln 2 to the power of 3x. You've just taken the logs of both sides. The whole point in doing that, Victor? Good, you can now bring the 3x down in front of ln. So we'd have ln y equals 3x times ln 2. From that, really, 3 is a number, ln2 is a number. So if we differentiate ln y, you'd have 1 over y times dy by dx. 3 would just stay because it's just a number. ln2 would stay as it's just a number, but the x would disappear. That's x to the power of 1. If you differentiate, it'll go to x to the power of 0, which is 1, disappears. So really, that would leave us with 3 ln2. Remember, again, ln2 is just a number. If you type it into the calculator, it's a number. So differentiate this the way you would 7x. You would just be left with the number. From here, you need to get dy by dx on its own. You need to get rid of the divide by y, so multiply both sides by y. That will give you dy by dx equals y times 3 ln 2. 
And once again, you want to write your answer in terms of x. So we need to replace this y with what is equal to. And if you look at your question, y is equal to 2 to the power of 3x. So we can replace y with 2 to the power of 3x. So dy by dx will equal, just writing it back to front, I'm keeping that 3 times ln 2. I'm just putting the brackets around the 2 there to show I'm not taking ln 2 times 2 to the power of 3x. It's just ln 2, and then I'd multiply that by y, and y is 2 to the power of 3x. And that's your answer. Example 3. Given y equals x squared times x plus 1 to the power of 4, divided by the square root of 4x plus 1, find dy by dx, again using logarithmic differentiation. So the first thing, Mary Lou, what are you thinking? Yeah, square root signs, get rid of the square root signs. So, really that would become x squared times x plus 1 to the power of 4, divided by, and you know the square root of 4x plus 1 is really 4x plus 1 to the power of a half. Perfect, well done Mary Lou. From there, well, really this involves powers and is going to be quite difficult to differentiate. So what we can do is we can take the natural logs of both sides and then use our log rules to make this dead easy to differentiate. So if we use our take natural logs of both sides, we would have ln y equals ln of that big ugly fraction on the right hand side. And the whole point in doing that is we can use our log rules. Because we've got ln y, well that's staying as ln y. ln, and we've got something times something. When you've got ln something times something, you can see here just with the log rules, you can split it up so it's ln something plus ln something. So here ln x squared times x plus 1 to the power of 4 would become ln x squared time, uh, plus ln x plus 1 to the power of 4. And then because you're dividing, well you can see if you've got ln a divided by b, well you're taking away this bit on the bottom. So you can write that as take away ln 4x plus 1 to the power of 1 half. You can't differentiate just yet because you do have these indices here, so you need to use this log rule just in the bottom to bring the indices down. If you do that then, ln y will stay as ln y. ln x squared, if you bring the 2 down, Bamp. That'll go to 2 ln x. You can bring the 4 down as well. Whee! Bamp. And that'll go to 4 ln x plus 1. And the half as well. Whee! Bamp. You can bring that down as well. So we take away a half ln 4x plus 1. Now you have it in a form that you can very easily differentiate. And I'm sure you will agree that differentiating it in this form here is far easier than differentiating it when it looks like this big ugly fraction. So if you differentiate ln y, ln y would go to 1 over y, but because we're differentiating y with respect to x, we'd have dy by dx. That would equal, if you differentiate 2 ln x, well the 2 is going to stay as it is, and ln x will go to 1 over x. Plus 4 ln x plus 1, well the 4 is going to stay as it is, and then we'd have ln x plus 1 would go to 1 over x plus 1. But always remember if it's ln something you'd multiply by the derivative of what is in the brackets. We'd multiply that by 1, which we don't really need to write, but remember to do it. After that, take away a half would stay as take away a half, and ln something goes to 1 over something, so we'd have 1 over the 4x plus 1. But again, you need to think, right, well, and multiply by the derivative of what is in the brackets. And here, if you differentiate 4x plus 1, you get 4, so you'd multiply by 4. It's really just using the chain rule. Make sure you remember to do that. Tidying this up slightly, 2 times 1 over x, you can write that as 2 over x. 4 times 1 is obviously 4. Times that by the 1 over x plus 1, you'd have 4 over x plus 1. You'd have take away, and then a half times 4 is 2, so it's 2 times the 1 over 4x plus 1, so it's just 2 over 4x plus 1. Remember, you want to get dy by dx on its own, so you need to get rid of the divide by y in this side, so multiply both sides by y. The left-hand side will leave you with dy by dx, and the right-hand side would have y times all of this right-hand side, so I'm just going to put that in brackets, so you just get that. From there, again, you want dy by dx in terms of x. We don't want to have y there, so we're needing to replace y. What is y equal to? Perfect, you got it. Just look at the question up here. It's telling you y is equal to this big ugly fraction. So you can swap y with the big ugly. 
And that will give you x squared times x plus 1 to the power of 4 over the square root of 4 x plus 1 times by all of this bit just in the brackets, which is just staying. You could leave your answer as that, but I'm looking at these fractions here and I'm thinking I've got a 2, I've got a 4, and I've got a 2, which means I could take out 2 as a common factor. And if I do that, we'll bring the 2 just to the front here, put it beside the x squared. The rest of the fraction will stay just as it is. And if I get rid of the 2 here, it would leave me with 1 over x. Get rid of the 2 here, that would leave me with 2. And divide that by 2, you would just get 1 over the 4x plus 1. And that will be your answer. Example 4, given y equals x times e to the power of x squared over the square root of sine x, use logarithmic differentiation to find dy by dx. Max, help us out. What do you do first? Yeah, if you ever get any roots, rewrite them as fractional indices. So, this here, our question will become x times e to the power of x squared divided by, and because it's a square root, we know that will be sine x to the power of one half. Well done, Max. From there, well, we could differentiate that, uh, but it's far easier using logarithmic differentiation. So, take the natural logs of both sides. If we take the natural logs of both sides then, we'd have ln y, taking the natural log of this side, and then the natural log of this side here, we'd have ln, and then this big fraction. From there, the whole point in doing that is you can use your log rules to split this up to make it nice and simple to differentiate. So once again, because you've got ln and you've got something times something, you can split that up. So it'd be ln something plus something. So here the x times e to the power of x squared would become ln x plus ln e to the power of x squared. And if you've ever got ln something divided by something, well, the divide by part will just be takeaway. So we're dividing by the sine x to the power of a half. So we can say that would be takeaway ln sine x to the power of a half just using these two rules here. From there, we can't differentiate just yet because we do have indices, so we're bringing the indices down. So ln y stays as ln y, ln x stays as ln x, ln e to the power of x squared. Well, we can bring the x squared down to the front. Whee! Bump! And that would be x squared ln e. But remember, what is ln e equal to, Syra? Yes, just equal to 1. Ln e means log base e of e, and if you have log base e of e, that's just equal to 1. So ln e will just disappear, leaving you with the x squared. Move this half down as well. If you move that down in front of ln, you'd have a half ln sine x. From there, you can now differentiate. If you differentiate ln y, well, ln anything goes to 1 over whatever it is, so we'd have 1 over y. But remember, we're differentiating y with respect to x, so we'd bring in dy by dx. Differentiate ln x, once again, it goes to 1 over x, that's absolutely fine, we're differentiating with respect to x, so that will be our answer for that bit. Differentiate the x squared, well, that just goes to 2x. And for this, well, we've got takeaway a half, so let's leave that as takeaway a half. And now differentiate ln sine x. If you differentiate ln something, it goes to 1 over the something. So that will go to 1 over sine x. But what do you need to do, Lewis? Yes, you multiply by the derivative of what is in the brackets. And if you differentiate sine x, you get cos x. Good, so you'd multiply by cos x again, you're just using the chain rule. So, let's tidy that up slightly. 1 over x will stay as 1 over x. 2x will stay as 2x. Uh, half times the 1 over sine x times the cos x. Well, I could write that as, leave the negative a half as it is, but then I could write that as cos x over sine x. But from the trig lesson, you know that, well, sine over cos is equal to tan, but if we have cos over sine, what is cos over sine equal to, Amar? You got it, it's equal to cot x, perfect. Now, well, we've got one over y dy by dx, really we just want dy by dx on its own, so let's get rid of the divide by y, so multiply both sides by y. So over here we'd have y times all of that right hand side. Again, we want our answer in terms of x, we don't want to have a y times, we are wanting it all in terms of x, but if you look up here, we can see y is equal to x, e to the power of x squared over the square root of sine x. We're just swapping this y with that fraction up there. Oh, yes, we are. Example 5. Given y equals x to the power of x, use logarithmic differentiation to find dy by dx. Once again, Gregor, how would you know that you're using logarithmic differentiation? 
Good, yeah, because x is part of an index, and to bring that down, you're needing logs. So let's use logs. First thing to do then is to take the natural logs of both sides. If you do that, you'd end up with ln y equals ln x to the power of x. And the whole point in doing that, Gregor, yeah, you can move this index down to the front. So if we move this down, we'd have ln y equals x ln x. From there, you want to differentiate that. So if we differentiate ln y, well, ln something goes to 1 over something, but we're differentiating y with respect to x, which will mean we need to bring in dy by dx. Differentiating x times ln x, how on earth would you do that? Taylor, help us out. Perfect, yes, you would use the product rule, and you use the product rule because you've got one function in terms of x times another function in terms of x. So, product rule. Write down u and v, work out u dash and v dash. And remember, if y equals u times v, dy by dx would be u dash v plus u v dash. u is going to be, well, it's x times ln x, so u is going to be x, and v is going to be ln x. Differentiate x, you get 1. Differentiate ln x, you get 1 over x. So the right-hand side using the product rule will be u dash times v, so 1 times ln x, plus u times v dash, so x times 1 over x. Simplify this, well, 1 over x times x, Jack, what does that become? Just 1, perfect, well done, really, you've got 1, you're dividing it by x, you're times it by x, divide by x and times by x, cancel out, good. So you're left with 1. From there, well, you want to get dy by dx on its own, we want to get rid of the divide by y, so multiply both sides by y, so dy by dx would equal y times all of that right-hand side. There is one more step, make away, what would you do? Perfect. You want to write your answer in terms of x. We don't want to have y in it, but if you look up to your question, you can see y is equal to x to the power of x. So swap this y with x to the power of x, and then we times that by ln x plus 1. That is it for that example. That's your answer. And that's also it for logarithmic differentiation. Try some of these questions in the workbook. It's page 37 and 38. Check these questions. Check the answers as you go. Let me know if you have any issues. Best of luck. Have fun. And then a step to the right.